Hi everyone, welcome to Book Talk Tuesday. Today I'm going to be talking about some spooky books because it's that time of year and I love a good spooky story. Um, my first, so all of these are going to be um, adult or young adult. Um, I'm sure there are some fun Halloween books that you can pick up for your kiddos, but these are gonna be for um, the older audience. So my first one is an oldie but a goodie, um, The Haunting of Hill House. Some of you may have seen the Netflix show that they did. I have not seen it. Um, I don't love visually scary stuff. I like to read about it. But this one is like your classic haunted house story. Um, it's not one of those, you know, super scary, like somebody's you know, coming out from the middle of nowhere and scaring the living pants off of you. It's just one of those kind of sit in your bones kind of scary books. Um, I read this, I think in college and I really enjoyed it. I didn't know if I would, but I've read some Shirley Jackson since then and I cannot recommend her enough. So if you haven't read The Haunting of Hill House, highly recommend it. <clears throat> As some of you may know, I love true crime, and as is evidenced by my true crime button, and I did do a book talk about true crime, and I may have talked about this one before, but I like to come back to this because it is just one of those classic horror stories um, that also happen to be true. Um, if you're not familiar with H.H. H. Holmes and his murder house, um, this is a great place to start. It has some information about the Chicago World's Fair in it, about kind of the architecture and all of the things that were happening for the World's Fair while H.H. H. Holmes was building his murder house and also subsequently murdering of, of many women. Um, I didn't super care for the architecture stuff. I kind of just wanted to get to the true crime, but if that's something that you're interested in, it kind of balances out the, the horror of the true crime element of this, um, of the whole time period as well. <clears throat> this one called Slade House is um, pretty short given what David Mitchell um, usually writes. This one I picked up because it was short and it was, um, I think I probably read it during the Halloween season. Um, it's kind of a haunted house kind of ghost story. Um, I was rereading my review that I put um, forward on Goodreads and I said that it's kind of um, like the movie Inception, if you've ever seen that. And kind of, I described it as a nightmare working itself backwards. So normally when you wake up from a nightmare, you're super happy that it's over and you're back into reality and um, you know, the nightmare has passed, but this is kind of working in reverse where um, you think everything's okay, but actually it's not. So it is a house that every nine years, somebody walks in and they never come out. And it has some predictability to it, but I really like that it just is kind of one of those nightmares that you are reading and you're like, is anybody ever gonna wake up from this? So it's a pretty quick read, um, but very engaging and also very spooky. <laughs> This is my one YA novel, um, The Girl from the Well. If you have ever seen the movie Ring, again, I'm not a visual horror person, so I have not seen the movie The Ring, um, but this is kind of the, um, I guess, story-ish equivalent, but it's more rooted in um, uh, folklore than it is in just like, just absolute horror. Um, it's about this girl who was murdered, and so she comes back and haunts um, people who also murder. She ends up murdering murderers. Um, but there's some uh, folklore elements to it. She finds this boy who is um, alive and has some strange tattoos on him, and they kind of um, work together to, you know, solve some, solve some crimes and, um, you know, solve the mystery of who this boy really is. So it is, it is very spooky, um, but it also is pretty beautiful in terms of the um, folklore aspect of it, and also just you know, two people working together towards a common goal. Um, but 
still very spooky. So I highly recommend that one as well. Um, this one is, so there are a couple of books with the title The Changeling, and I actually read this two years ago for a Pop Sugar Reading Challenge about two books that have the same titles but are different stories. Um, so I read this Changeling and then I read another The Changeling, um, but I actually liked this one a lot better. Um, if you are familiar with the folklore of the Changeling, um, where a child gets stolen and taken to the fairy world and then is switched out for um, a Changeling child, this kind of follows that, but it takes place in New York City. And um, I did not know what to expect from this book. I was not expecting how kind of unsettling and upsetting it was, but like for me in a good way, it was unsettling and upsetting, but it just took some interesting turn that I was not expecting at all. The ending, um, I won't spoil it, but threw me for a loop and was so upsetting, but in the best way. Um, so it, it follows this couple who just had their first child. Um, the father's, his father disappeared many, many years ago when he was a child and he's been trying to figure that out and he gets visited by some strange dreams and some strange memories. And then he is, um, when he's married and has his own child, something happens with his wife and child and he's trying to go through some avenues to figure out what's going on there. So lots of things that I was not expecting um, and was quite surprised by. Um, so this one is kind of a modern day twist on the um, folklore of the changeling. <clears throat> one of my absolute favorite spooky stories is the String Diaries. This also um, incorporates some Hungarian folklore and um, follows a line of women who have to basically fight against this boy slash man who can um, um, shapeshift. He's a shapeshifter. And this was a huge page turner for me. I could not put this down, even though it scared the daylights out of me. I remember reading this and I was like sitting reading and there was a window over here and something spooky happened. And I told myself, okay, so I'm gonna turn my body and face the window so I can see exactly what's coming at me. Um, it's, it was one of those kinds of stories, um, but it was, it kept me so engaged. It was so good. Um, I did not expect any of what actually happened in the book. Um, the characters I thought were really well developed. Um, it definitely was an emotional ride and also a spooky one. Um, but it was really good because I thought it was pretty um, unique in terms of kind of the books that I've read in the past. Um, I thought the idea of a shapeshifter was really interesting because who can you trust if somebody can, um, you know, change their shape into people that you think you know, um, who can you actually trust um, and are they who they say they are. So this is one that will um, definitely keep you up all night wanting to not only finish it, but making sure that things um, end okay. <laughs> and last but not least, um, The Best American Short Stories is not a scary story, but one of my favorite short stories is Pretty Spooky. Um, so this one is one of my favorites. It's by Joyce Carol Oates, and it's called Where Are You Going? Where Have You Been? This was actually based on a string of murders that happened in Texas and she wrote that after hearing about um, these crimes that happened and it just is so good. It follows this girl who's staying at home and she somebody comes up to her house um, named Arnold Friend and he's kind of strange and not quite sure what's going on and then just some things ensue and it is a short story but it packs a huge punch um it still to this day is one of my favorites i've read it several times i recommend it to a lot of people that i know and it's not horror um you know it's not about ghosts it's not about um specters it's not about folklore and shapeshifters but it is kind of horror in that idea of you know somebody just 
kind of taking control over you and over the situation and, and not knowing who they are and strangers coming up to you. So as a true crime fanatic, of course, it's pretty spooky for me, but um, just kind of one of those, one of those stories that kind of leaves you at the very end, you know, feeling like a little unsettled. So these are my recommendations for uh, my spooky season, spooky, um, spooky book talks. So we've got Where Are You Going, Where Have You Been, which I, which you can find anywhere, but I picked it up in the um, Best American Short Stories of the Century. So you can get this at the library, um, or you I think you can probably read it somewhere like Project Gutenberg or online or really in any of Joyce Carol Oates' short story collections. The String Diaries. The Changeling. Girl from the Well. Also, these both have um, sequels, and I have read both of them. Sequels are hit or miss, um, but you can find out for yourself how you feel about them. Um, but if you are wanting more in terms of these um, worlds, you can read you can read more and read these sequels. Um, the Slave House, The Devil in the White City, and Shirley Jackson, The Haunting of Hill House. I hope you enjoyed my uh, spooky book talks. And if you have any spooky book suggestions yourself, I would love to hear them. I'm always looking for good um, thriller, horror, true crime books. So um, please leave those in the comments or come by the library and let me know. Thanks for joining.